So, continuing with uh, precision farming and protected cultivation and simulation application in agriculture for NRM, we will be now discussing about various type of practices you know that are required for better crop production, crop management and which are done in a very precise manner for utilization of less resources with large impact means efficiency of the system will be enhanced by this kind of simple simple technology under precision farming. Now one to mention is mulching. Most of you might be knowing already little bit about mulching. Various kind of you know mulching is done for agricultural crop productions like you can have black mulch with you know black color plastic, you can have transparent mulch with transparent plastic, organic mulching where you put you know different crop residue and then you can have colored mulching for different purposes but certainly each one of them has different purpose and also you know different kind of investment. Now why we do mulching? Mulching we largely do for retaining the soil moisture in the soil. So when you do this kind of you know covering of soil, so it actually reduces the evapotranspiration from the soil under the sunlight. So the moisture in the soil remains into it. It also helps in weed control. We know that weed is uh, unwanted. So anything, any plant which are unwanted within a cropping system, we call them weed. So controlling weed is also another aspect of mulching. Certainly proper mulching will improve your crop yield and then application of fertilizer, pesticides can be reduced by utilizing mulching in a proper manner. Just now I talked about different kind of you know mulching which are available and some of them are used uh, largely you know in the developed country and many of them are also used in developing country. Now black mulch as this uh, particular picture shows, black mulch generally conserves moisture. It uh, as I just you know mentioned in previous lecture that uh, about greenhouse if it is covered with black thing definitely black will absorb your heat inside the soils. It helps in weed control and uh, this is one that you will see in many parts of our country. Now the transparent uh, mulch that you see in these pictures, it helps in soil solarizations. Means if you need more sunlight for your soil, then you go for this kind of transparent mulching and they help you absorbing the radiating heat and controls bacteria, fungi, insects, nematodes by sheer heat uh, you know treatment, mites, weeds and all those kind of things. Organic uh, you know mulching is useful from another point of view. In India as you know that there are various states which produce a huge amount of crops and after the harvesting it becomes an issue that where actually they will you know uh, throw this you know refuse crop refuse after taking the harvest what remain even to roll back into the soil they require manpower and for them to put uh, a manpower for just you know managing those crop refuse you know may seem to them like a wastage of resources. So instead of that they go for the easiest solution that is burn it off and we all know that the result of burning of crop refuse is very very dangerous. So, it is uh, recommended that you know crop refuses and waste you can actually put back into soil. This not only keep the soil you know warm, it also help to retain the moisture. It can also you know uh, get degraded over a period of time by you know different microorganisms and thus add the soil organic carbon into the soil. So, Mulching overall has as important purpose in the field of agriculture and management. Now the next uh, important thing that under precision farming often people talk about is irrigation. Lot of technologies, lot of instrumentations has come into the market with regard to irrigation aspect. Now micro irrigation specially is a field where you know we try to utilize as less as possible water with maximum effect means production of yield should be much high with less 
water and from that only the concept of crop or drop uh, has come out as a popular program in our country. Now, we have different type of you know irrigation systems available agriculture system in developed and as well as developing country. Furrow irrigation very common you can see across our country. Sprinkler irrigation in the recent time in the last one decade or so has become popular in large farming areas, but still it is uh, not you know so much uh, popular uh, with small farmers because again uh, this kind of system involves certain amount of investment. There are of course some government schemes which are available under which a government encourages uh, farmers to go for this with certain amount of subsidies and also associated required training. So, if you look at that the efficiency of irrigation with regard to different irrigation system. So, that will tell the story that how uh, this particular aspect irrigation is one of the most uh, popular farming practices under precision farming. Now, if we go for flood irrigation, your efficiency is somewhere around 40 to 60 percent. If you go for furrow irrigation, that efficiency goes a little up 50 to 70 percent. If you go for sprinkler, efficiency go much higher 60 to 85 percent means this shows that how much amount of water you add and how much production you get. This is how you calculate you know the efficiency. Central pivot irrigation 80 to 90 percent and finally, if you go for drip irrigation, your efficiency would go 75 to 95 percent level. So, naturally if you look at these things, the best option is to go for drip irrigation. Well, we in our country started you know popularizing drip irrigation almost uh, 10 to 15 years to 20 years also in some cases. And if you look at that uh, still it has not you know gone into every nook and corner of our agricultural field. It will take time because as I said that most of our farmers they hesitate actually going for this kind of investment because they are resource poor. So, it needs to be seen that how you know uh, different kind of programs can be mainstreamed and the awareness of the farmers uh, how can be generated. So, that a large and large number of small holding farmers also come uh, to utilize the benefit of drip irrigation. Now, drip irrigation is as I said is very getting very popular in areas where you know farming it takes place in a very large uh, amount of land say for Punjab and Haryana where farmers are relatively resource rich then the farmers of suppose some parts of northeast India. So, if you look at that uh, uh, largely the resource uh, you know rich farmers farmers who has relatively you know some amount of uh, money to invest in this kind of technology they are going for that. And also they are uh, getting the benefit of the different government schemes to encourage this kind of technology. So, the farmers who are poor in resources sometimes even are not able to get the benefit of, of these uh, technologies or the schemes. So, I think that this requires little bit of deliberation how to make these uh, you know, technologies available for all. Now, drip irrigation as I said that it gives the highest amount of efficiency. So, it is uh, you know worthy enough that we spend a little time on this particular technology which is known as drip irrigation. Now, drip irrigation or drip system it has various you know techniques and instrumentations involved with that. So, it has a pressure gauge venturi system, sand filter, screen filter, hydrocyclone filter, non return valve, bypass valve and then from here you are pumping out the water. So, the water from the tank or the well you pump it passes through certain you know filtration process and then finally, it comes through the pipe and then pass through the farming area. Now, there are various kind of uh, materials are recommended for this kind of drip irrigation. Some places especially northeastern India 
people can use you know even bamboo there are various you know reports are available where it shows that even bamboo can be used as a conduit for drip irrigation so the challenge is as i said that earlier also that even if technology is available the challenge is how to make it a low cost one utilizing the resources which are available locally and for that lot of research and innovation is required now as i said that uh, you know drip irrigations once you invest it helps actually to develop your production and productivity so if you look at uh, you know the pipe based uh, irrigation drip irrigation system there are various you know parts are involved for this kind of system now you have uh, different kind of emitters means through which the water comes out from the delivery pipes so as you see that here is one system where uh, it is used here for as a water drop so drop by drop the water will fall on the soil and it will be taken up by the plant so essentially you reduce the amount of water you know flow and you give that much which is required for your plant now this is another system where water is coming out from you know multiple holes and getting spread it across the field largely in the you know lawn golf court you will see that this kind of you know rotating kind of uh, emitters are used we have also bubblers you know in the system bubblers you can see here and then low cost deep emitters using waste plastic bottles are also used this is in bottle basically inverted bottle and then on the cap you add a small straw even you can use the straw that you use for uh, sipping juice or cold drinks that can also be used as a pipe to pass on this water drop by drop so in the market nowadays we have you know inline emitters as well as you see here in this picture and also we have micro sprinklers so these are micro sprinklers as i said that largely used in you know golf courses and also where you like to have a very nice uh, you know green uh, grassy patch so there you can use this kind of micro sprinklers now the ultimate uh, objective of this kind of you know instruments is that you maximize the utilization of water so with every drop of water you get a crop so water for plant is life for us also now if you give extra water then what the plant requires where it will go either it will go away from the system or it will go in the ground water so again to utilize back that water it takes time so instead of that whatever resources that we have if we can enhance the efficiency of that water use then definitely we can grow more than one crop utilizing the similar amount of water so this drip irrigation technology helps us to maximize our production and minimize the water uses how it looks like if you look at uh, a sprinkler uh, system so as i said that in large you know field golf field or in an area where beautiful green grass patches are there you will see that sprinkler system is working now there is the source of water and you have a pump this pump take away the water passes through a delivery pipe you have a valve here which can regulate the water flow when you want to stop you can just close this valve and water supply will stop so this water will come here and then it will pass through these parallel channels every channel will have another valve so you can control it also uh, row wise also you can control if you if you do not want in this row water you can close this uh, valve here but continue with these two so this control valve also help you know to regulate the water flow and the irrigation as per the requirement of the crops so these are sprinkler nozzles as i said this keeps on moving and spread the water from both side of the field so this particular system is uh, very easy actually to maintain it doesn't require too much of skill only thing is that little bit of investment 
that you may need to install this kind of structures. Now, what are the advantages uh, of drip and sprinkler irrigation? Now, first drip irrigation the advantage is like you know it helps you to save water by 30 to 50 percent in comparison to conventional irrigation system where you cut the field and allow the water to come in from the channel. Okay? So, 30 to 50 percent you know saving water is a significant amount in especially in area where you know uh, rainfall is very uncertain and dry soil. You can actually increase yield from 50 to 100 percent by drip irrigation. Reduction in fertilizer uses is also possible. In increased paste and weed control efficacy through deep irrigation, your efficiency of controlling weed paste is also higher. Cultivation of undulated land is also possible. Now, many cases in undulated land, what happened that people you know avoid to go for you know crops or plantation because it is very hard to manage what you call conventional irrigation in this kind of land. So, you can go for deep irrigation, efficiency water management of course, as I say time and again it could be efficient you know heavy or light soil. It is also known as trickle irrigation because it you know comes in drop by drop. Few disadvantages also for uh, deep irrigation as I said that it requires high installation and, and maintenance cost. There is always a chance of choking problem mainly you know for subsurface drip system and also for inline drip emitters. So, that choking systems uh, can be you know maintained properly if the supply lines is clean and also the emitters are checked you know in regular interval. Sprinkler irrigation advantages. So, it can create a kind of a artificial rain by forcing water under pressure through a small circular nozzle as you saw here. So, this is a sprinkler. So, it can actually create a kind of a artificial kind of rain systems. Now, it also rotates in a horizontal direction by the force of water and produces a circular weighting pattern. So, that helps actually uh, it can take care of right and left hand side of it and can cover a certain area. Most suitable for close growing crops like oil seeds and vegetable sometimes fruits also. It is very efficient for water management and of course, it is suitable in case of high elevation area in the mountain areas. But again sprinkler irrigation also has uh, you know certain disadvantages. It is also high installation and maintenance cost is very high and uh, mainly drifting of droplet problems occur in this system where wind speed is very high you have certain issue because the, the sprinkler when it actually runs the small droplet instead of going in the direction that you want it to go because of strong weed it might go you know away from the targeted area. So, those are small small disadvantages associated with both drip and sprinkler irrigation. Now, let us discuss another new aspect of uh, precision farming which are becoming very popular in these days when our land area is increasingly getting smaller and smaller. So, the challenge is to grow you know more from less area. Now, that is why soil less cultivation, soil less cultivation has become a kind of a new trend where you can use instead of soil various other materials to grow your plant. One of those very popular material is quare which you get from you know coconuts plant. So, quare which are made of coconut husk you know can be used uh, as a material in place of soil. Quare tends to have a pH 7 which is very good for agricultural purposes and uh, ideally we look for neutral range you know soil. So, quire can provide you that kind of environment. Quire can be purchased either you know in compressed form or in loose form. 
The compressed form is required for hydrating purpose before you use it. Although the hydration process may be you know labor intensive, the dried and compressed blocks are much easier to transport from one area to the other area. So, for suppose you are buying it in place A and your farm where actually you are going to grow crops with utilizing this square is say 5 kilometer away from that area. In that case, the dry compressed blocks of quire is better to carry or transport. Quire is uh, not a uh, you know screen to remove the fibers. This adds its porosity and also provides better aeration. The circulation of air would be better. The air filled uh, porosity inside the cocoa or coconut quire is about 10 to 20 percent and its water holding capacity is about 70 to 80 percent. If you look at the CN ratio, it is 80 is to 1 and it has a very low electrical conductivity. Now, these are uh, certain characteristics of coconut coir which makes it an alternative media crop growing in place of soil. Sand. I think sand is not something new. We many of us we have seen that uh, sand is used as an alternative you know media for growing plants. Most commonly used in media mixes is to add a kind of a coarseness in the media and it is required to provide you know better drainage and also aerations. So, sand has a low water holding capacity, it is coarse in uh, texture and it also contains almost no uh, nutrients into it. So, you know these are few problem with sand we know that, but sand is better to sterilize by heat or chemical way to avoid the presence of any kind of pathogens in sand, which often in case of soil we find an issue. So, that means if you grow your plant in sand, there is a less chance that you may require any kind of chemical pesticides or chemical inputs for maintaining this plant growing. Now, in case of soil less cultivation, there are a few other aspects that we need to keep in mind like uh, perlite, vermiculite and commercial media. These are some of the things which uh, you know in case of soil less cultivation we need to keep in mind. Perlite is a siliceous or volcanic you know rock material that when you crush it and when you heat it, it expands you know with uh, you know lot of uh, air filled cells into it. So, that means it will have some already you know pore spaces or, or cells filled with water. So, what water adheres to this kind of surfaces, but does not in this kind of you know perlite aggregates. Perlite aggregates is sterile in nature, chemically inert and has a negligible electrical conductivity. pH value is 7.5 roughly you know uh, near neutral I could say. Pyrite has a low water holding capacity and is often used to increase aeration around the root zone area of the plant. Now, due to its uh, limited uh, water holding capacity, irrigation system have to be designed or maintained to provide uh, water on constant basis uh, when you grow plant in this kind of uh, material. With uh, perlite, all essential nutrients need to be supplied through the irrigation water. That is one aspect or challenge in growing crops in this kind of material. Vermiculite. Vermiculite is made from mica. Now, during its uh, manufacturing, vermiculite is heated to a very, very high temperature and ultimately which leads to expand this uh, material and also help in sterilizing it. Okay? Vermiculite is uh, also lightweight, sterile and able to absorb large quantities of water. That is one good thing in this particular material. Vermiculite uh, provides you know some nutrients in the form of potassium and magnesium and the most importantly it retains the fertilizer into it. Vermiculite is often also found as a component in commercially prepared media mixes that is available in the market and in particular those which are formulated for seed germination. Okay. So, many crops you know we require 
that seeds to be germinated in one system and then you grow it in another system. Vermiculite help wins in this particular purpose. Now, commercial media, prepared media which are available in the market, these medias are commercially mixed to a specific proportion of material like say peat, perlite, vermiculite with different additives like some wetting agents, slow release fertilizer, mycorrhizae. So, these things you know are mixed in a manner that it gives you uh, the best mix for growing plant into this. So, pro mixing kind of is a trade name of one mix with different formulation. But again remember this kind of commercial media based culture is not yet very very popular in our country because this uh, requires again some investment and that is why probably private uh, you know parties and contract farming probably they can go ahead with uh, this kind of technology. But soil less cultivation certainly has a potential and it is a futuristic uh, kind of uh, practice uh, which uh, need to be looked at and uh, required R&D must be carried out on this particular technology. Next we will talk about hydroponic system which has to do with uh, you know maintaining or management of water. Hydroponic system is another you know new technology under precision farming which has become popular in many parts of the world and also we can see that in certain parts of our country some individual parties are, are actually utilizing these for contract farming or you know for individual uses. Hydroponics uh, basically is a method of growing plants in a water based nutrient rich solution but not soil. Okay? So, the water is made in such a way that it provides the all the nutrients that a plant would require or try to take out from a natural soil ecosystem. Hydroponics is a soil less cultivation system. Here the root system is supported using an inert medium such as partile, cocoa coir, clay pellets, peat, compost, vermiculite etcetera etcetera. Now the basic principle of hydroponics is to allow the plants roots to come in direct contact with the nutrient solutions that you are putting there. Nutrient solution means different micro macronutrient like nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium mixture, calcium, nitrate, ammonium nitrate these are the different you know nutrients solutions which actually plant requires for its appropriate growth. Organic fertilizer can also be used in hydroponic system but with proper precautions because organic fertilizer can attract pathogens and in this kind of system in hydroponic system if pathogen infestation takes place it will be really very very harmful or you know it can actually take away the total planting system. Now drip system is very common and a simple technique which can be used uh, for you know providing even solutions to each of the plant individually and the excess nutrient solution can be either returned back to the reservoir or we may not even prepare that solutions if we know the exact amount of nutrient that is required for a particular plant. And that, that comes with little bit of experiences while you actually run this kind of system for some time. Hydroponic system also works well uh, with uh, different growing medium with high water retention. And when the system is working correctly, it is a very low maintenance and high output system. And that is why hydroponic system is getting increasingly popularity across the world and especially areas or countries where water availability is a big issue. So, that is why this system hydroponic system is also another futuristic you know technology which is already here, uh, we have it in India also and this considers the situation. Suppose in future if we get scarce amount of water already some parts of the world is facing the water scarcity, hydroponic system could be an alternative answer or a befitting answer to this kind of water scarcity situation.